Hello? You're watching me, Curtis Daly. You can follow me on Twitter at Curtis Daly underscore. Well, would you believe it? The UK is an institutionally racist. I'm not a religious man, but thank God for that. Boris, you, your government, give yourself a pat on the back. This is, this is truly remarkable. That's right. You can take your report and shove it where the sun doesn't shine. This report is baloney. In fact, it is an insult. Clearly a whitewash. Many people across the country will find this utterly, utterly contemptible. None other than number 10's race advisor, Samuel Casimir, who resigned over the findings. Furthermore, in trying to downplay racism, the report itself manages to be racist in itself. The remarks it makes in regards to minorities' culture and the behaviour is because of their own inequality. It suggested to scrap unconscious bias and hang up pictures of successful Bane people instead. Seriously. Seriously. It even unashamedly tries to pass on positive spin of slavery because it created an African British culture for them. Yes, you heard that right. Unbelievable. What does the report say in regards to Windrush or Grenfell? Surely the government cannot deny that ripping people away from their families and deporting British people to their country of heritage, even if they've never been before, is racist. It's immoral, wrong. The government knows the dangerous cladding that led to the Grenfell tragedy still hasn't been removed. And that's a problem that needs to be addressed, right? Well, they certainly did reference them. It explains the way the Windrush scandal and Grenfell tragedy because the government didn't mean to be racist. In 2018, Pakistani and Bangladeshi employees were on average paid 20% less than British white employees. UK born black African employees were paid 7% less than white British people. Black people are nine times more likely than white people to be stopped and searched by the police. Campaigners Liberty said that the figures showed increase in state harassment of black people that it wouldn't even make a difference in tackling serious crime. Police are five times more likely to use force against black people than white people. They're also nearly twice as likely to die either during or immediately after having contact with the police. And when it comes to police shootings, black people are more than six times as likely to be killed. We have statistics to show that there is institutionalized racism. We have Many minority groups try to tell us that they receive racism from the state. Uh, we've got campaign groups trying to change that. There's no denying this. The report claims that hate crimes haven't increased, but rather more and more people have access to the means of recording incidents. But what about spikes in hate crimes? After 2016 referendum, hate crimes went through the roof. Anti-Asian hate has massively increased due to COVID. So these aren't long-term trends where you could factor in technological advancement, making it easier to capture crime on your iPhone. Even, look, even if we accept that hate crimes have increased due to more awareness, this just simply means that the problem is a lot worse than we thought. Therefore, we should do something about it. If the UK wasn't institutionally racist, Boris Johnson wouldn't be prime minister. Well, in fact, there wouldn't be a single racist MP. Political parties are major institutions, so politicians can somehow rise through the ranks and become the most powerful people in the country, when many have made some racist remarks in the past, and you know, some still stand by them, then that is institutionalized racism. Ironically, just a year ago, many in the commentary, uh, the government, decided to accuse the Labour Party of having institutionalized anti-Semitism. You cannot claim that there's no institutional racism on one hand, whilst claiming that one of the major political parties is somehow a home for anti-Semitism. It's almost as if people are playing political football with racism to pick and choose to suit their agenda. The media, well, the media, they are one of the worst culprits of racism. The Daily Mail supported the Nazis during the 1930s. It's still one of the biggest tabloids in the UK. Why are the government denying racism? Is it ignorance, callousness, not really giving a shit? I suspect it's all three, but there is another element, culture wars. Since the economic debate has shifted to the left, naturally right-wing parties use nationalism, social conservatism to their advantage. Downplaying racism in calling campaign groups or progressive politicians woke for thinking otherwise is the exact strategy the Tories are using. Now, I don't think many people are gonna fall for this report, uh, but I expect the wider culture war waged from the conservatives will work. 130,000 deaths, breaking laws, lies, shagging mistresses, that's not affected their poll ratings at all. Expect this to also work in their favour because let's be honest, everything else has.
What do you think? You've heard what I've had to say? Drop a comment below and give the video a like. We've got some really, really exciting content coming soon and this is only gonna get bigger. The future is independent media.